And some big time changes as to what actually the models are latching on to when it comes to this golf disturbance. What's going on, guys? I'm certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegas. In this video, we're going to talk about some of those changes and then some potential impacts likely coming to the sunshine state of Florida once we get into the early and middle stages of the week. Here is the basin. We have Kirk. It's a Category 4 hurricane. We have another area that was just highlighted by the Hurricane Center off of Africa. There is Leslie down there. That's also poised to become a major hurricane staying out the sea. But the one we're going to focus on most in this video is this disturbance that's in the Gulf of Mexico that is going to try to get going. Now, a couple of things that we, uh, a couple of the differences in the modeling from yesterday when we talked to where we are right now is there were these two little disturbances. There was one about right here, one about right here, and the models were trying to determine how these two would interact. What has thrown a wrench into that was former Tropical Depression 11, at least what's left of Tropical Depression 11, getting back into the Bay of Campeche from the Pacific side, and now the models want to latch on to that as being a separate and then dominant entity. Now there's going to be much more room for development as we are going forward. By the way, if you do want to stay updated on this system and the rest of hurricane season and winter, hit that subscribe button and join this growing and awesome weather community where we get to have the weather conversations. So I'll show you what I'm talking about right here. This is going to be the uh, GFS uh rendition of the vorticity, the spin of the atmosphere, and then the wind direction. So here's where we start to see a few of the differences. So here's our little vorticity lobe up here. That was one of them. But then this is a, the little bit of the change, and you'll see that in the rainfall graphic coming up for Florida. It comes now in a couple of different pieces. So here is one little piece of spin right here. But you can clearly see where the dominant piece is now back here. We were talking at least the last few days, that it would look like that we would have Sunday into Monday be a hodgepodge of disorganized mess coming into Florida, bringing with it that heavy rain threat, but then that being it. Now, most of the modeling that you're going to see out there is catching on that certainly happening to give some heavy rain Sunday into Monday to part of the Florida Peninsula, but then also having this thing some pieces of Tropical Depression 11 from the Pacific side be that piece that the models are really starting to grasp onto. And then there we go with that bigger, more well-defined system, strong tropical storm, maybe Category 1 hurricane coming anywhere really from about Cedar Key to about Fort Myers. And again, that's going to take some uh, take some time to kind of determine where exactly that's going to come ashore, and that would obviously maximize rainfall impacts. Uh, but nonetheless, I think somewhere from about Cedar Key to about just south of Fort Myers, Cape Coral area, where we could see a strong tropical storm or hurricane make landfall. That was the GFS rendition. I want to show you the Euro, and this is hot off the press, the 12Z run, the morning run on uh, October 4th. And this is the difference. And you can kind of see here, let me bring out the extra telestration here because as we look at this extra weather computer, you'll see here, this is what we've been talking about for the past few days. That was that front disorganized stretched out like a string bean lobe. Now there's this secondary feature, which is partially related to that low level spin from tropical depression 11. So this is what we've been talking about. This is the new piece. And let me get this telestration off and we're going to take the European forward and I think the one concerning thing, and then let me pause that right here, remove the telestration. There's our stretched out lobe coming out and heading towards the Bahamas. So there are two distinct little entities now. Here's the deal. Uh, notice that this gets pretty strong. That's at 988. So that's going to be a strengthening tropical storm, maybe low end hurricane. It gets down to 977. That's the pressure that the model is forecasting. And then it has it coming in right around just south of St. Pete, closer to Bradenton, Sarasota, that kind of area. I want to be clear about something, too, that the landfall site of this growing chance for a strong tropical storm or hurricane is going to fluctuate over the weekend until we get that low-level center that models can latch onto. It's still just a guessing game as to where the initial disturbance is going to be and where and that means everything for the late for the end of its life, so to speak, where it makes landfall. So we're going to be doing a lot of forecasting over the weekend once that 
low-level center gets going. And then really by Monday afternoon, probably about 48 hours prior to this thing potentially coming ashore and really likely coming ashore, that's when we're going to start to know. But really the GFS, the Euro, the Euro AI, all in this same kind of location. And that really means... Uh, everything to rainfall. Now, what I'm about to show you here, this is going to be the GFS rainfall over really starting on Sunday. And that first push there through Monday where you get two to four inches of rain in South Florida, that's from that first thing. Now what you see here, the whites and purples showing up, that's from the potential tropical disturbance that's going to be moving in Wednesday into Thursday. So you see here, the GFS wants the center to come around like Tampa I-4 corridor, and that puts a lot of rain. Do me a favor here, though, and don't pay attention exactly where that heavy stripe of purple and white are coming in, the potential double-digit rainfall totals. That can really come in from anywhere from Miami to the Everglades to West Palm Beach, Fort Lauderdale, Fort Myers, or where the model is currently showing it. And that is something, again, we're going to fine-tune as we get closer to the event, really by Monday when you're watching our, our next video here. But nonetheless, we're going to be watching that closely because regardless of the actual strength of that system, we're talking about a major flood threat to somewhere on the Florida Peninsula. And again, we're going to fine-tune that going forward. But again, because of this change in the modeling where now we not only have those two separate vorticity lobes, if you will, those two little mini disturbances that we were been talking about, we also have the models latching on now to what was left of Tropical Depression 11 in the Pacific. And now that's going to be the main slash most impactful entity of the bunch. So that's kind of the wrap on this middle of the week or this late weekend, early Monday, kind of round one, and then round two, the potential strong tropical storm or hurricane. Before we go, I wanted to talk about Hurricane Kirk, and it is a strong cat four at this time as of three o'clock on October 4th. Uh, this may very well have been a cat five last night. So satellite, some satellite techniques that we have the ability to use projected it being 160 miles per hour category five hurricane. It was officially I think, last night at that time, a 145 cat four. We're never going to know because it was too far away from land. Uh, too, it's not going to affect anything. So there's no hurricane hunter missions going into this thing. And again, it's too far away for that to happen. But nonetheless, it's still looks mighty, mighty impressive on satellite as a strong Category 4 hurricane as of Friday, October 4th. And again, this is not going to affect land as a major hurricane. It is going to kind of split the difference between Bermuda and the Azores. It's going to bring rough surf to the Azores as well. One of the things we'd have to watch across the pond here, uh, some in Southern Ireland, maybe parts of the UK and France still as a tropical storm getting close to a 60 mile per hour tropical storm and uh, some rough waves, some strong winds, heavy rain could be coming to parts of uh, Northern and central France, Southern UK, and then parts of Ireland as well. So we're going to be watching that further down the line. And that's going to be next Wednesday, about the same time that tropical entity is going to be impacting Florida. Uh, we could have something tropical impacting France, uh, Southern Ireland, and the UK. So some crazy stuff going on. Wanted to end with this again, just to show you again, the increasing probabilities in our orange blob here from the national hurricane center. There again is our big picture of Kirk. There is Leslie down here. And then the new blob is this that is going to be rolling off of Africa. Um, really that, and that's going to be rolling off of Africa, and we'll have the chance to develop. So when we were talking in early September that we would likely have a delayed peak season due to a lot of the components that we mentioned here on this channel several, several weeks ago and why it had been so quiet, the lid came off, and now we're seeing what we would typically see in the first couple of weeks of September happening through the first couple of weeks of October. All righty, guys, we're going to keep you posted. If you found this informative and want more weather content and analysis, we got you covered in a non hypey, sensationalized, scare tactic way. Some of the other garbage is out on YouTube. That's why we're here. We're trying to dispel some of that and just have an honest weather conversation. So, show some of the transparency that we do to make the forecast and then to just bring you guys in in the chat 
and have that conversation because I love having that conversation. I know it's a conversation like five times now uh, with you guys as well. That's important to me and important to us that we get to do that and just to have a spot to talk about the weather and nerd about the weather. So if you like that stuff, please do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, give it a thumbs up as well so YouTube pushes it out to more people so the credible information can be flooded all through YouTube to kind of mute the noise of some of those other channels that are out there. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Be safe. Have a great weekend. We'll catch you soon.